we'll do a little before after this is what came out these are six very cooked clutches what's so going to go back in it's going to be nine exity clutches So this is going to substantially improve the torque capacity. Hi, today we're working on a Nissan Titan. We have a previous video. This transmission was done by another shop several times. It wasn't working out. One of the things we noticed about it is it didn't have any extra clutches in it or, or any like performance improvements whatsoever. So I know this looks like kind of a mess now, but I'm going to show you what we do to these transmissions when we put them together to get a lot more clutches in there, which is going to give you a lot more torque capacity. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take these drums apart. So I'm going to take them apart, clean them, and change the rubber seals. So to do that, we're going to have to compress them. Take these snap rings out. So our direct this is our HLR, or our high-low reverse clutch. And this is our input clutch. And as we discussed, this transmission was supposedly a performance unit that was done somewhere else. And so far, other than a Transgo shift kit, so RE5 RO1A or RE5 RO5A HD2 is, I believe, what they call the kit. But other than that kit, there's nothing performance about this. Factory amount of clutches. You know, pretty much nothing done. So... Let's get this out of the way. We have a snap ring, a balance piston, some springs. Watch your ears, everyone. This is our piston. Kind of the same here. Balance piston, a spring, snap ring. And again, you get the point. So now what we do is we take all this rubber off. And this is the thing. Back in the day, when you did transmissions, this was the most important thing, was changing these rubber pieces. Because they used to get hard. And it's kind of not something that happens anymore. I guess due to improvements in both the rubber and in fluid technology. So hard seals are um, very, very unusual. But you want to take these drums apart because it collects all kinds of junk and nastiness underneath. Like, you know, you want to get all that out when you're building a transmission. So now I'm not going to bore you with it, but the first thing we're going to do is clean all this stuff up. After that, we're going to do a little machine work and we're going to check all of our clutch clearances. Okay, so this is kind of the machine that we use to clean this stuff. So it's essentially a giant dishwasher. It uses a low sudsing detergent and really hot water around, you know, just under 200 degrees or so. So we run it in here. And then we rinse them off, and then we blow them dry with air. And sometimes they need a little spritz with mineral spirits ahead of time, too. But it's real important to get transmission parts as clean as possible. Okay, so I pre-measured all this stuff. And um, now I'm going to show you what we have to machine. So we have our direct, our high-low reverse, 
and our input clutch. And I'm gonna take these over to the lathe and turn them down a bit. All right, we're gonna start with this piston. And uh, I can't take as much off as I want in each pass. And I'm taking quite a lot. Um, let's say it's at least a hundred thousandths of an inch. So it's gonna take several passes. I'm gonna probably edit most of that out. All right, next we're gonna machine the input clutch piston. This we just have to take a little bit off. Um, you know, with our smaller parts, we were able to, to get the extra clutch, the two extra clutches that we need in here. But we're just machining for, for clearance at this point. You also gotta be careful on these parts. If you set this up and you take too much off, you get too greedy trying to put extra clutches in, they could get hung up on the part that these clutches are engaging. So you have to stop short of that. So, you know, as with anything, there's only so much room that you have to work with to, um, to do what you have to do as far as the extra clutches. So it really, it becomes a combination of both the thinner clutch pieces and the machine work. And you usually can get to where you need to be. Finally, we're going to take a little bit off the high-low reverse piston. And again, this is just for clearance. We're not taking out, you know, the um, measurement of a, a clutch in steel, which sometimes you would do if you're, you're um, handling it that way. This, we're going to rely on our thinner pieces, and this is literally just to get the clearance code. All right, now I'm gonna quick put these drums back together. I've already done the machining. I did a preliminary mock-up assembly. These all should be good when they're together. So now I'm gonna put the rubber on the pistons and put the drums together. There we go. Put these in. Our return spring. Balance piston.
This is our high low reverse. So we'll put that machine down. Same thing, return spring. Balance piston. And we gotta compress it some. And lastly, we have the directs. There's a couple size seals in here that are close in size, so you gotta be careful. This bottom groove gets a slightly larger seal than the top groove. So there's four seals all together that go on this piston. You see the other ones were only two seals each. That kind of has to do with the uh, design of this. It's got two separate paths of application. One is for your forward gear and one is when you're in reverse. And sometimes these are a little tough push down so I find it's easier to just put it in the spring compressor and hopefully send it home that way. That felt nice. So once again, turn springs, balance piston, snap ring. Okay, so here's our three drums. And as I said, I had these set up already. We'll do a little before, after. This is what came out. These are six very cooked clutches. What's gonna go back in, it's gonna be nine exity clutches. So this is going to substantially improve the torque capacity. And I'll check the clearance for you when I put this together. Already checked it. Okay, so we typically could check with feeler gauges, really get too far into what the clearance is. And down and dirty, we could use some coins. 
right? Because we have a dime. It's usually about 45, 50 thousandths. We have a penny. It'll give you about 60 thousandths. Quarter will give you about 70 thousandths. And a nickel is about 80 thousandths. So a penny will go in and a quarter won't. And what we're looking for here is around 50 to 70 thousandths. Same with our high low reverse. And I don't know if they even publish a spec for the um, clutch clearances. There's not really too much information on these, as is with most automatic transmissions, because the dealers don't service these things. So the manufacturers don't really have any need to make manuals. They kind of keep that information secret. And us guys in the transmission business, especially when something's pretty new, we got to figure it out ourselves. Okay. And from this, we also went from five clutches To seven clutches so that's a big improvement lastly we have our destroyed clutch pack that's seven pretty <laughs> pretty nuked clutches some of them you can't even tell are clutches anymore and we're going to go back in with nine so that's um that's pretty robust So we got about eight or nine extra clutches in this whole transmission, which is a pretty good deal. Feel a lot uh, better and more confident in it, the more clutches you could put in. And this is about the max you're gonna be able to get. There's nowhere else to fit them. just about at the 50,000 mark. My dime back. This is what we have for now. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell.